Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about Trump and Taylor and a tale of two fundraisers. We're going to do this because over the last month, there's been a chain of events. And then over the last weekend, there was another. And there's been a lot of comparisons made. There's been a lot of things said. And somebody came under scrutiny and came under unfair, unjust, and unwarranted attacks from the right. Taylor Swift just got trashed for the last month for the apparently unforgivable crime of dating a football player. Um, the, the real reason the right went after her, it, it wasn't because she dated a football player and the cameras got turned on her. That was just the excuse that they gave their base. That was just how they manipulated them. The reason they went after her is because she encouraged young people to vote. Didn't even tell them how. Just told them to register and vote, you know? That was it. But see, that is a threat to authoritarian goons everywhere. So, she uh, needed to be under fire to generate some reason to dislike her. Now, Trump, he had his event in court and got that big judgment against him. His supporters, they put together a fundraiser for him, the billionaire. Uh, looks like they're raising about $100,000 a day. Which is, I mean, that's interesting. That's, I mean, if they were able to keep up that intensity and just sustain it forever, um, it it would take care of the interest because that judgment is accruing. Um, and it's about $100,000 a day. Taylor Swift is also a billionaire even though Trump actually is allegedly more of a billionaire, has, has a net worth like twice what she does. Taylor Swift was also involved in a fundraiser over the weekend. Also, about $100,000. Well, with her, it was exactly $100,000. Two $50,000 donations to the family of the woman who was killed at the Kansas City Super Bowl Parade. A billionaire doesn't need your money. Here's the thing, and it's something that the last weekend, the last month, you, you figure it, it would have taught people this, but if you constantly find yourself having to attack and hate people who do objectively good things just to stay in the in-group, to stay in the in-crowd. Your group's bad. If you are expected to attack people for doing good things or for just living their life, you're not part of a good group. And that group has overcome your identity. I refuse to believe that this many people in this country are innately bad. You're following the crowd. You're following your peers. You are othering, attacking, and hating people simply because you're told to by your group. It's not behavior you would tolerate from your children. 
given the age gap brackets involved. My guess is you would say something about if all of your friends mm-hmm. jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? It, it appears that for a whole lot uh, of people, the answer is yeah. Yeah. I will totally attack somebody for telling people to, you know, do their civic duty. I'll attack somebody because a cameraman showed them having a good time. I'll attack somebody who donates to the family of somebody who's been involved in a tragedy. I will call them names. And I will support the uh, the opposite. If you find yourself constantly having to hate and attack good people to stay in the good graces of your peers, you need new peers. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.